Hi biologists, let's start by looking at the learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of this section and following the biology syllabus, you should be able to understand and describe the limitations of the scientific method. What does this actually mean? What are we trying to understand? It is straightforward enough. You must understand that the scientific method is limited, that it cannot be used in all circumstances, that it's not always a perfect process. Let's look at scientific method limitations. Before we look at the limitations of the scientific method, we better remind ourselves of the scientific method in the first place. You might recall what we learned from a previous video. The scientific method is an attempt at using an organised approach to solve problems. Basically, it is a set of guidelines that scientists follow when they're carrying out their work. It involves asking questions and searching for answers in a logical fashion. Scientists seek solutions to problems. They use science to discover new knowledge. And while they're seeking these solutions and using science to discover new knowledge, they follow a set of guidelines. Now, sometimes though, the scientific method does not give us the results and conclusions which improve our knowledge. Here, we're trying to understand that the value of the scientific method is limited. It cannot be used in all circumstances. The scientific method is not always a perfect process. It can be limited by problems. And that is what we're trying to learn in this video. Now, what are the limitations of the scientific method? Well, the value of the scientific method is limited by the following points. The extent of our knowledge, the basis of investigation, on down through the list, down to ethical issues. And what we hope to do is we will take each one of these points and have a word on each one. The first limitation of the scientific method is the extent of our own basic knowledge. This means how much we know about the world. Forming a hypothesis and designing an experiment depends on the amount of knowledge that we have. So, for example, in the past, when they were trying to find out the causes of diseases, they did not know about the existence of microorganisms. They did not have microscopes, so they couldn't discover the causes of diseases because they were limited by the basic knowledge that they had. So, lack of scientific knowledge can limit what we can discover. So if I have a hypothesis that there is life on another planet, well, lack of technology, lack of knowledge limits what I can discover because I am not able to go out there and find out if there's life on that planet. I am unable to detect it with the technology and the science that we have at the moment. So the extent of our basic knowledge, how much we know about the world, that can actually limit the use of the scientific method. Another feature that limits the use of the scientific method is the basis of the investigation. This refers to how experiments are carried out. Sometimes experiments are carried out in labs and in petri dishes and if they are badly designed then the experiments will give invalid results. Experiments should resemble real life, but due to lack of equipment and technology and time and money, it can be very difficult to cre recreate conditions in science labs. Lack of these things inhibit the use of the scientific method. A lot of cell research is carried out on petri dishes instead of being carried out in living organisms. So the results obtained from such experiments might not necessarily resemble real life. 
so such an experiment might give an invalid result. Control experiments can be hard to set up. So, for example, if I want to investigate the effect of burning too much fossil fuels leading to global warming on the planet Earth, then by right I should have a control. I should have another planet to act as a standard against which I can compare my results. So, a control would be a planet where there are no humans with the same conditions as Earth. And that's impossible. So, the basis of the investigation, how the experiment is carried out, can limit the use of the scientific method. Also, our ability to interpret results can act as a limitation to the scientific method. If results are wrongly interpreted, then faulty conclusions will be made. Sometimes scientists may interpret results differently, and this can lead to slightly different conclusions. Sometimes scientists incorrectly interpret the results. Drugs tested on animals and deemed to be safe were discovered to actually harm humans. Therefore, it is important that the results of any experiment are analysed and considered in a proper manner. So, while a scientist might be using the scientific method and following it perfectly step by step, it's not much good or its use is limited if the results are not properly analysed and free from human error. Changes in the natural world also limit the use of the scientific method. Sometimes results are relevant to living things at one particular time. And as living things are constantly changing, then hypotheses must also constantly change. We can see this at the moment due to COVID-19, where all our previous thoughts on viruses are now being questioned. A lot of scientific discoveries have been made purely by accident, without using the scientific method. Such a case occurred when Alexander Fleming discovered antibiotics. He was growing bacteria on petri dishes and he noticed, quite by accident, that when his plates were contaminated with mould, that the mould seemed to be producing a substance that killed the bacteria that were growing nearby. And thus, Alexander Fleming discovered, purely by accident, that microorganisms like mould produce antibiotics that harm other microorganisms without damaging human tissue. Finally, ethical issues are another area that can limit the use of the scientific method. Ethics refers to whether issues are right or wrong. Arguments arise over the use of the scientific method in areas that involve ethical issues or moral behaviour. Such issues might involve the origin of life. We met that idea already with the theory of evolution. The ethical issues involved in the theory of evolution, if you recall, was that it seemed to contradict uh, the Bible and the story of creation. We also met these ethical issues in human reproduction and the use of IVF in medicine with the use of stem cells. We had an ethical issue regarding the use of stem cells to cure Parkinson's disease and developments in biotechnology. There are ethical issues involved with genetic engineering and the creation of genetically modified organisms. And arguments arise over using the scientific method in these areas that involve moral behaviour. And there you have it. Don't limit yourself. Practice in a jotter. Now that we have reached the end of our lesson, have we achieved our objective? Can you understand and describe the limitations of the scientific 
method.